Chapter 4, Section 8 is entitled the Pythagorean Theorem. We'll go ahead and start off with the definitions here. Pythagorean Theorem is defined as formally in a right triangle. It's the square of the lengths of the hypotenuse being equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. In a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. So it would be helpful now if we understood what the legs were and what the hypotenuse is. And luckily for us, those are the next two definitions. Leg is defined as in a right triangle, it's the side adjacent to the right angle. In a right triangle, it's a side adjacent to the right angle. So it's one of the two sides that actually makes up the right angle in the right triangle. And the hypotenuse, well, in a right triangle, that's the side opposite the right angle. That's the side that does not make up the right angle. Again, from the top, Pythagorean theorem in a right triangle, it's the square of the length of the hypotenuse being equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. The leg in a right triangle, it's the side adjacent to the right angle. And the hypotenuse in a right triangle, it's the side opposite the right angle. So what are we talking about here? What's this theorem all about? What this theorem is all about is being able to find an unknown side in a very specific type of triangle, the right triangle. If we're given two sides of a right triangle, we'll be able to find the third given those two sides using the Pythagorean theorem. And again, the theorem is pretty simple. It says that if I square the lengths of the legs, it's the same as what the hypotenuse is when we square it doesn't work with any other type of triangle. It only works with right triangles. But of course, when we know three sides of a triangle, we can do a lot of things with that, like find the perimeter. Um, obviously, it fits into what we've been studying, because if we're talking about squares, but the lengths of the, the legs themselves aren't actually, or the hypotenuse for that matter, aren't actually squared, to come back from something being squared to being the regular length is actually going to entail us using the square root, which is why this fits into chapter four, because of course, we've been talking about exponents and powers and roots and square roots and cube roots and all sorts of those things. So it obviously brings all these topics together with that geometry concept that we've studied already this year. So let's go ahead and go down and take a look at question number one here. Question number one is asking me to find the length of the hypotenuse to the nearest hundredth. So this is really working with the formula going forward in that they're asking you to find C, which is the hypotenuse. That's going to be the easiest type of Pythagorean theorem question. When you are asked to find A or B in the formula, which is going to be one of the legs, you're really going to have to work it more like you're solving an equation. Not that that's difficult, but it's going to be certainly more difficult than us uh, finding C, the hypotenuse. So let's uh, start off here and talk about what the formula is. Formula here is going to say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A and B represent the legs. And remember, as I said in the introduction, the formula starts off, it says the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. Well, there's your sum, your addition problem. So that's how we kind of knew that these were the legs. In the right triangle, and we can use the one that you see on the screen since that's what we're going to have to do in example one, the legs are the two sides that make up the right angle. So this side that's marked four over here is a leg. This side that's marked five down here is also a leg. Does it matter which one is A and which one is B in the formula? No, absolutely not. So you can plug either one of those in for A, and the other one is obviously going to be B. C in the formula represents the hypotenuse. Remember, the other part of the formula said that those legs, when I square them and add them up, is the same as the hypotenuse squared. So that's all by itself. Um, C is always going to be the hypotenuse. There's a couple ways to spot the hypotenuse in the drawings, other than the fact that it's actually already labeled C right here. Um, it's one of the sides that does not make up the right angle. Well, these two clearly make the right angle. This one does not. It's also always going to be directly across from the right angle. So you can spot that in either of those two ways, and that would be acceptable. So formula says I'm going to take those legs, 4 and 5, and square them and add them together, which is what you see they're working through here on the left side of this formula. Now on the right side, they're not going to do anything, because that's what we're finding, C. So all the way down, this is going to somehow reflect C. It's not going to change, because that's what we're figuring out. So I'm going to take that A length, they picked 4, and square it, that's 16. 
take that B length, they pick 5 and square it, and they get 25, add those together, and that's 41. Now, notice what the 41 equals though. 41 equals C squared. But if we look at the triangle, it's not marked C squared, it's just marked C. So that's why I'm not done. The answer isn't 41 here. I need to get back to regular C. Well, to bring this back to being C, now what you have to do is take the square root. Because squares and square roots undo each other, just like addition and subtraction undo each other, just like multiplication and division undo each other, which is what they're showing you right here. To solve for C, I've got to take the square root of C squared. Well, remember, when we solve an equation, which is really what this is, we have to do the same thing to both sides of the equal sign. So when I take the square root here to get this back to C, I also have to take the square root of the 41, which is what they're then showing you on this line. And of course, that's a good calculator question. They've told me the directions to round to the nearest hundredth, and when they do that, they get 6.40, which means C is 6.40 units long, whatever that unit would happen to be. Remember, the reason they wrote the zero here at the end is not because it's absolutely necessarily meaningful, because we know the zero at the end of that number doesn't actually mean anything to us. We could write 6.4, but what they're showing you there is that they did actually round to the hundredth. The number ends in the hundredths place when they ask you to round to the hundredths, unless we can't get there. If the answer would have just been whole number seven, all right, you can't then go write something else there. All right, you could write 7.00, but you're not necessary because it does have a finite end. Place that number does go on beyond uh, that digit there. All right, so let's go ahead. And, and we'll go ahead and take a look at question B here. Um, now the B question here is a triangle drawn on top of a coordinate grid, which is something they could have us do. And they're going to ask us now, once again, to find the hypotenuse. Now, some people say, oh, this is really easy. I'm just going to count grid squares, and that's how I'm going to come up with my answer. Well, in some ways, yes, you can do that. In other ways, no, you can't. If we look at the triangle that they've transcribed with these three coordinates, remember, the first number is always an x, the second number is always a y, so 1, negative 2 means right 1 down 2, which would obviously be this dot here. 1, 7 would be right 1 up 7, which would be this dot here. And 13, negative 2 would be right 13 down 2, which is this dot here. Connect the dots. Okay, That's how we did that. As I said, we could talk about counting grid squares there. That is a possibility. That it would and can and does work for finding this distance that goes straight up and down on the coordinate grid. It also works for finding this distance that goes left to right on the coordinate grid. As you can see, they've already marked those 9 and 12. But it's not going to work going this way. We can't count going across grid squares diagonally in the same way we can going up and down. So if your approach to find the hypotenuse is just to count how many grid squares it goes across, you're going to be in trouble. All right? You can do it for the horizontal and the vertical distances, but the diagonal one, the hypotenuse, you're going to be in trouble. So again, since these two make up the legs, the right angle, these two are the legs, they make the right angle, all right, these are going to be A and B in the formula. And again, remember, the directions told us we were finding the hypotenuse, so we know right now we're continuing to find C. That's going to be more of a concern for us in a minute when we actually have to go about finding this. So I'm going to plug those two numbers in for A and B, just like I did in the last question. It doesn't matter which one you pick for A, which one you pick for B. Notice they happen to pick 9 for the A and 12 for the B. 9 squared is going to change into 81. 12 squared is going to change into 144. Add those up, and that's 225 for c squared. But remember, as we saw in the last question, this side length isn't c squared. This side length is actually c. So to get from c squared to c, now what I'm going to do is go ahead and take the square root. When I take the square root here of c squared, that's going to give me c. When I take the square root of 225, that's going to equal 15. So C must be 15 units long. And again, we could sit there and try and count that, but look, it goes from, if we're just going to try and match it up this way, we know it goes across about 12 units here, left to right. It's from 1 to what we know is 13. So if we're saying, well, it goes from 1 to 13, right? well, that's going to be the exact same as this. And we can clearly see from the formula we just worked out, it's not the same as this. So 
really, you, you're going to have to use the formula here. Counting is not going to be an approach that will give you anything better than what at best could be an estimate. Let's go ahead and take a look at number two. Now, number two, a little bit of a different question here because in question number two, they're not asking me to find C anymore. They're actually asking me to find B. As you can see, you've got this kind of skinny and very tall triangle over here, and they're very clearly asking me to find B. So working the same formula, but we're going to work that formula a little bit differently here. So what do we have going on here? Well, we've got A and B being the legs. Remember, the legs make up the right angle. So these two sides here are my legs. Now, since they've already called this one B, I don't get a choice anymore. The seventh side is going to have to be A. And remember, that other side that does not make up the right angle, that's going to be C. That's the hypotenuse in the formula. So we've got our formula here. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and dump in some numbers here. And then I'll start solving. So we just said that A is going to be 7. It's the only thing it can be. So I'm going to change A into 7. B is going to stay B because B is labeled on the triangle as B. That's what we're solving for. And C is going to change into 25 because, again, that's the only thing it can be. Now, the 7 squared and 25 squared, we can go ahead and work those out. 7 squared is 49. 25 squared is 625, as you can see. So we've got 49 plus B squared equals 625. And as I said in the introduction, this is more like solving an equation now. That's really what we're doing here. We're treating this like we're solving an equation. So that's going to be the approach here. So if we're solving an equation, we know those rules that we've done over and over and over again tell us to keep these variables on the left, which b squared is on the left side of the equal sign, and get these numbers to the right. Well, 625 is there. 49 is not there. So we're going to have to fix that and move this 49 out of the way here. Well, if I'm going to send 49 to the opposite side of the equal sign, remember the way we do that is doing the opposite. So that's why you see them subtracting 49 on both sides. When we do that, we now know that b squared is 576. But just like when we worked for the hypotenuse, it wasn't c squared that was labeled on the triangle when we found the hypotenuse. It was c. Same thing here with the b. It's b that's labeled on the triangle, not b squared. So to finish, I've got to get this back from b squared to b. How do we do that? We take the square root. And remember, since we're talking about solving an equation, if I do something to one side of the equal sign, I've got to do the same thing to the other side of the equal sign, just like when we subtracted 49 on both sides. So I'm going to take the square root on both sides. Square root of b squared goes to b. Square root of 576 goes to 24. 24 times 24 is 576. That's how we know the square root of 576 is 24. That also means that in terms of this particular question, the unknown side in the right triangle measures 24 units long. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next question here. The next question is a word problem. It says two planes leave the same airport at the same time. The first plane flies to a landing strip 350 miles south. The other flies to an airport 725 miles west. How far apart are the two planes after they land? So let's go ahead and make ourselves a quick little illustration here. You've got an airport, and one's going to fly south. Well, in case you forgot your directions, north is usually depicted as up, south is down, east is to the right, and west is to the left. So from the airport, plane A is going to go 350 miles south. Plan B is going to fly from the airport 725 miles to the west. And I'm going to go ahead and shift this illustration a little bit over. And we're supposed to figure out how far apart the two planes are after they land. So what they're asking us to find, really, is this distance right here. Well, as you can see, once we've drawn it, you've seen how it really applies to this section. It is a right triangle. Here is your right angle. These two sides make up the right angle. So these are obviously the legs, which 
forces this side that I drew here in red to be the hypotenuse, or if we want to think of it as C, because that's what it is in the formula, we can call it C. Well, now that we kind of have a depiction of what we're doing, we can plug these numbers into the formula the same way we've been doing and solve. A is 350 and B is 725. The legs always represent A and B. They picked 350 and 725 because they could. 350 squared is 122,500. 725 squared works out to be 525,625. Remember, when we're squaring a number, we're multiplying it by itself. 725 times 725 should be a big number. Indeed, we see when we did that, we got 525,625. And of course, that's going to equal what the hypotenuse squared is. But again, we don't know that. So that's why that just says c squared. So I'm putting these two together, and that's going to be c squared. So 648,125 is going to equal c squared. Well, again, just like we saw earlier, when I'm finding the unknown side in the triangle, it's not the length squared. It's actually just the length. So I've got to get back from c squared back to c. And the way we're going to do that is by taking the square root. So I'm going to go ahead and take the square root all the way across here now. And when I take the square roots all the way across, the square root of c squared is c. The square root of 648,125 is 805, which means the planes are about 805 miles apart after they land. One thing I should point out is we've talked about before, when I take the square root of a number, there's actually two numbers that work. For instance, if I was talking about the square root of 4, the two possible solutions would be 2 and negative 2. Why? Because 2 times 2 is going to make 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 also makes positive 4. But usually we only focus on this positive square root. Here, this answer wouldn't even make sense. Realize what the question is talking about. It's talking about the distance apart two planes are. Planes can't be a negative distance apart. They're just going to be so many miles apart no matter if one's north and one's east or one's north and one's south. They're always going to be a positive number. So here, you could say, oh, what about negative 805? Well, that answer just doesn't make sense here because we're talking about a distance. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up by looking at the check it out examples here at the bottom of the page.